In this tutorial, I'm going to explain specifically the match and the index function in Excel. Now, these two functions are lookup functions, and they can replace hlookups and vlookups to find the information you're looking for. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what a match function is and how it works. So let me first start off by showing you what I have here. I have a table with sales data for four parts for 12 months. And I want to use the match and the index function to pull information from it. So what I have here is you can enter a part number and a month to look for the sales for that part number for the given month. Now I already have one tutorial showing you how to make this with the match and index function. So I'm not going to specifically show you how to make a lookup. I'm going to use this example here to explain in depth the match and index function. So the match function works by doing equals match open parentheses. Then what you need is a lookup value, a lookup array, and a match type. Now what the match function does, its whole purpose is to return a number, one number. And that number is going to be a relative cell reference. So what that means is it's going to search for your lookup value within the lookup array and then it's going to tell you how many cells away from the corner of your lookup array the lookup value is. And it's only going to return a number. So by itself it doesn't do that, that much. That's why you usually are going to be using it in conjunction with the index function. So let me give you an example. I have equals match open parentheses. Now my lookup value I want to be the part number. So I'm going to click the cell with the part number and also notice for the lookup value I could put text in here but I just need to make sure that I put quotation marks around any text that I put in here. So that means if say I want to type in ASD01 instead of a cell reference I have to put quotation marks around that. But I'm using a cell reference so the next thing I want is my lookup array. Now my lookup array is going to be like a table where I want to find these values and I want the part numbers. The part numbers are right here. So I'm going to select all four of them and that's going to be my lookup array. The last thing that I want is the match type. Now there are three things that I could input here. I could put a one a zero or a negative one. Now if I put in one that's going to find the largest value less than or equal to my lookup value. If I do a negative one it's going to find the smallest value greater than or equal to my lookup value. If I put a zero in it's going to find the first value that is exactly equal to my lookup value. So that's what the 1, the 0, and the negative 1 are going to do. I want to put a 0 in because I want the exact value. And if you're working with text, you're really just going to want to put 0 in. It's mainly for if you're using numbers in your match function or looking up numbers that you're going to want to use a 1 or a negative 1. Then I'm going to close the parentheses and hit enter. Now note, NA comes up and that's simply because I have nothing in the lookup value. So for this part number cell here, I have nothing. Say I type in ASD-02, enter. You can see that the match function returned a 2. Now just to remember what that is, I'm going to type in column right there. So this means that ASD-02 is located in the second column of my table array. Now remember the table array started with ASD01 and then went over. So ASD01 is in column 1. ASD02 is in column 2. So the match function looks for ASD02 within the table array, found it, and counted how many columns from the left it was. So it's 2 from the left. 
or yeah and that's all the match function is going to do for you so if I change ASDO2 to ASDO1 it says that it's going to be in the first column now note if my table array included this cell right here so one to the left of ASDO1 everything would have to shift one to the right so ASDO1 would then be column 2 Now note that the match function also works with rows. So I'm going to do a match function to find the months. Equals match, open parentheses. Now my lookup value is going to be where I'm going to type the month in, in this cell, comma. My lookup array, where the months are located. And I'm going to start right here. And then I'm going to drag that down, comma and the match type I want is exact so I'm going to put in zero close parentheses enter now note just because it's, just because it needs to be an exact match does not mean it's case sensitive so say I type in any one of these months like May it doesn't matter if my M is upper or lower case it will still match it so for the month if I type in May enter it tells me my match function tells me that May is located in the fifth row. So I count one, two, three, four, five, and it's in the fifth row. Once again, if you include a cell above January, May will be in the sixth row. Now, that's how you can use the match function for a column and a row. So you see, it doesn't matter which way it goes. All that matters is your lookup array right here. That's going to be basically the most important thing. Now the index function, let me escape out of this, the index function is going to return a cell's value from a range and that's where you can use the match function with the index function. So if I want to find the sales here I'm going to use an index function and the index simply goes equals index open parentheses. Now this is where the arrays become important because the first thing that I need to enter is my array and since the row array or since the column array started with ASD01 here and the row array started with January here my table array for the index lookup will start right here and that's very important because row 1 and column 1 have to match up with the data point you want so let me go ahead and select this data so that's where I want to get the data from, all of the sales data. Now, comma, the next thing index wants is the row number. How index works is it's going to look for the row, and then once it finds that row number, it's going to count over and find the column number. So all I'm going to do for the row number is simply click a link to the match function there, comma, then the column number going to close the parentheses and hit enter. Now what happened the index looks in this table here for the row that's in B11 and B10. The match function tells it to go five rows down one two three four five to May and one row over to ASD01 so it returns a value of 222 if I type in say March for ASD02 what's happening here is the index fun function is being told to go down three rows so one two three and then over two columns one two to get 285 so that's how the match and the index function can work together the index fun function will return a value from a row and a column but it needs to know where the row and the column are and the match function tells you what row and what column to look in now it is kind of confusing but I am going to give you this spreadsheet on the website so you can go ahead and follow along with it or try and uh, perhaps understand it a little bit better by looking at the formulas in front of you and the website is teachexcel.com